There's two experiences I had in the darkness when I was using a lot of drugs and I was communicating with uh, beings from another dimension. Um, so the first one is the first of the two experiences, but I, I believe they're linked. Um, and before I even describe it, um, one, one of the, the things that I've been looking into is, you know, what is a hallucination and was this a hallucination? Um, and it's interesting because I think people often ascribe uh, spir spiritual experiences uh, and, and call them hallucinations. Um, but when you actually do the research into um, the scientific description and understanding of hallucinations, um, they're nothing like this. They're nothing like uh, a full sensory experience um, that, that, that is a logical flow that has a, a timeline. So a hallucination would be uh, visual, often audio, um, you can have all you can have all hallucinations. You can have um, touch hallucinations, and <clears throat> taste hallucinations. Um, I've had many hallucinations myself, um, but one of the things about them is they'll they'll happen in one or two senses at the same time. And according to um, is it Oliver Sacks, the 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 neuroscientist um i have to check his name but i think you know who i'm talking about um the maximum that they know of is three senses at the same time and the senses they don't make sense so it doesn't it doesn't it, it's not like reality where if i see a table and then i touch the table it feels like a table in a hallucination it's not like that the senses don't make sense and the timeline doesn't make sense and it shifts and and you know it's fantastical um so it doesn't behave like reality now what i went through in what i'm going to describe was um as real as my my life um day to day you know and it had a timeline and it was in a location and the location didn't change and what happened in that place was continuous and logical <laughs> according to the according to the circumstances that were happening uh monstrous but believable you know it was yeah anyway let me just describe it so um the f at this point i was living alone and i was pretty much so deep into the spiritual realm i was having so many supernatural experiences and encounters um, it was completely uh, overwhelming and I was so addicted to it and the quickest way to get into that state um, was to just take uh, drugs and it had gotten to the point where it didn't take it took one or two lines and I was communicating um, so that's sort of how I was living 24-7 and I was making money doing other things that I can't mention because <laughs> this is on YouTube. Um, so um, yeah, I'd gone out. I remember I'd gone out. I didn't go out a lot at this point. <clears throat> I'd gone out and it was one of those weekends. I went to um, industrial techno nightclub and there was a heaviness, you know, it was heavy. There was something heavy, heavy, heavy. Everything was dark. Uh, everyone was in a dark mood. I went to someone's party afterwards at a warehouse and there was a weight. And even the people I knew, there was something going on. You know, you just had this sense of like spiritual darkness. And it went on f for a few days, all of this. And I went somewhere else. And I, so I was up for a long time. And, um, I had taken a lot of different substances, um, some of which I 
hadn't taken before and some of which um, I'd never put together. So I was in a really open state by the time I got home. And as I normally did, I, I would always spend a fair amount of time staying up even longer and taking more drugs um, and being in the state and receiving information. So anyway, I don't know how long I stayed up when I got home, but it, there was a lot of this heaviness, this darkness feeling. And I mean, I didn't care, I, you know. So when I finally went to bed, um, I lay on the mattress and I was disturbed, like, malaise you know i was rolling around I, I was very uncomfortable i was feeling disturbed and i was sort of moaning and rolling around and very i felt invaded anyway so this i don't know how long this went on for and then um there was this shift this shift from this reality into another reality. And I was just suddenly in this other place. It was a place, it was a place place. It was like an underground um, place. It had arches, um, bricks, and I was standing on a sort of a, industrial steel um, staircase at the top, a short staircase that went from a door behind me. Um, and I was standing on it and it was, uh, it was very thick metal. I could feel the cold and I could smell the metal and the steps were like three steps, very sharp edged steel and um the door behind me was closed i didn't look i just knew this and um <clears throat> the first thing that hit me was the smell there was a smell that is indescribable but i will try and describe it um it was sulfurous decomposition rotting death but much more complex than that. There was a paste of metal, like iron, um, but it was invasive. It was, it was, it it became actually the, probably the most shocking part. Even though you're gonna hear how shocking the rest was, um, so I'm physically there. I can sort of see my body, my hands, myself like this, and I'm standing there and the steps go down and they go down to the floor but the floor is covered in a soup like this deep of matter bodily matter um, decomposing matter um, bits of flesh and i don't know everything you can imagine which is obviously not where the smell is coming from and um in it, you know, semi-submerged, are all these people, lots of people. Um, I mean, how big was the room? The room was about as big as a... It wasn't that big. You know, I could see the walls and the arches and the edge of the, it. Um, so it wasn't massive. It was like a big living room, but it went down and there's this soup and there's these bodies. Now, they're alive and they're all sort of moving around and moaning and making these terrible noises and I'm looking at them and they have bits missing and they're in states of decomposition. They look like they sh they're rotting corpses, but they're not dead. <laughs> it's indescribably, indescribably disturbing um, beyond it was so bad my eyes were like it felt like you know like in that movie where your eyes are like pinned open so you have to stare because i couldn't take my eyes off this and this smell and they were alive and all i kept thinking was why wouldn't they die why wouldn't they die that's all i could think why wouldn't they die 
And I kept looking at them and they should have been dead. There was bits of their head missing. Men, women, you know, uh, I couldn't tell much more past that. Um, bits of their, their, their intestines coming out, like everything, everywhere, they're just merging into the soup. And I'm standing there and who knows how long, felt like a very long time. And then, um, boom, I'm back on my bed rolling around and now the smell is still there the smell is now still there so i i'm like what is going on i'm rolling around now i'm like i don't i couldn't understand and then after a while i'm back in this place standing there again exactly the same place and now you know after a time because this went on a long time i knew which Decomposers, decomposing character was where and when I went back they were there at the same place also in the middle of the room there was a, a rectangle like like a size to put a body down and there was a um, a cage um, that was submerged so that just the top of the cage was sticking out um, thick bars and um, really sharp as well and I could just see the top of someone's head sticking up like that in this. So this soup was, it's just, no. Anyway, horror, absolute horror. So I'm back there. Again, all I can think is, why would they die? Why would they die? I'm looking at it. You know, there's, their limbs have come off. It, it was really um, devastating, devastating. So... <laughs> Again, so I'm, I'm seeing it, I'm hearing it, I can hear the, the moving around in this, making these terrible squelching noises, I can hear the moaning, I can hear, I can, I can you know, see details, there's maggots, there's worms, it, they're, they're everywhere, it, I can taste the air, I can taste this iron, sulfur, um, I can feel the cold, um, so this is like a full sensory experience. Um, the smell becomes my reality. So I don't know how long I'm there and then boom, I'm back in my bed running around and then boom, I'm back in this place. This goes on and every time I come back to this dungeon place, I stay longer. And it just gets so overwhelming that I'm, I just lose I don't even, it doesn't make a difference if I'm on my bed because the smell is still with me and it's almost as bad as the full experience. So then at some point when I'm in this place, the door behind me opens and someone comes in with another person and just sort of throws them down the staircase and they hit, doosh, doosh, they hit the staircase. And as they're slamming into the metal, you can hear this wet, cold, slamming, crushing sound. Um, bits of them are getting chunked out of their their eye or their, you know like as they hit the steel they're breaking and there's there's um, hitting this lake of matter with this devastating sound and <clears throat> just sort of descending into it and joining and moaning and rolling around as much as they can and they won't die they won't die and they're decomposing they should have been dead. So, so this starts happening. And, the, you know, the timeline, as I said, is logical. It's not a hallucination. Um, because when I go back to the bed and then I come back, the new person is there. <laughs> you know, so the timeline is logical. The sounds match what's happening. The taste, the smell matches what's happening. This just goes on. And finally, um, there's a period of time where I come into this space and I, I don't go back. And I thought I wasn't going to go back. I was just there. So, <clears throat> so it's like I'm just forced to stand there. I can't go backwards. I certainly don't want to go backwards because whoever is bringing those bodies in. And I don't want to go forwards. And all I can do is experience this. And... Um, 
So I, I guess I just thought I was there now, right? And when I say this was a long time, this whole thing lasted for three days and three nights. The reason I know is because I had my phone with me when I went up and I looked at it and then I looked at it when this all finally ended and it was three days later. So that's how long it went on for. Um, couldn't figure out where I was I kept thinking this is real I knew this was real somehow this wasn't not real like this was I was like where am I in a place have I um astral tra traveled somewhere you know have I how is this happening um now I had ha um astral traveled before um but never for an extended period of time so um, there was a point in the long stretch where I was there for a long time, just, I can't describe the horror, I can't even pretend to, 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 to try, but there's nothing I could do to describe it, um, in its horror. Um, I finally reached such a point of despair and devastation at what I was seeing and experiencing. I made a decision, uh, because I couldn't just stand there. To actually go and join them and so I remember walk, walking down these steps and stepping into this matter and lying down with these people and just giving up And yeah, then um, I started coming back again. There was a transitionary process where I started coming back again. At this point, though, my brain was overwhelmed. And yeah, I, I came back. I woke up at some point and I was there in my bed. And the smell didn't leave for weeks. It stayed with me and it haunted me. It haunted me because it just it was almost as bad as being there. Anyway, so I couldn't figure this out. It never left me. Uh, I was, I told people, I was like, I don't know what this is, what this was. How can this happen? How, how, what is it? What does it mean? It's too awful. Anyway, it didn't make sense um, until I read the Bible. And then um, I read a passage, I think it was in the Gospel of Mark. Where Jesus said, you know, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but rather be afraid of him who can cast your your body into hell, where the worm never dies. And then my I stopped. Where the worm never dies. And that's what I saw. I saw that they were being eaten alive, so they couldn't die. And they were decomposing, but they didn't die. And I don't believe I went to hell. I actually don't think you can go to hell and come back because I think the memory of it would just kill you uh, if you came back from hell because I couldn't bear that. I believe it was some kind of vision. That's what I think it was. I think it was a vision. And I believe it was a vision somehow of my actual spiritual state of where I was at that time and how close I was to being in that state that I was at the door of it and that you know that's what bothered me because I I couldn't shake the sense that somehow this is real and how I knew it was a hallucin wasn't a hallucination but only recently have I done the research and I you know, there's no scientific explanation for this stuff, and they just kind of don't talk about it. Um, you know, they go, oh, well, there's hallucinations, but what most people don't know is that there's no such thing as a three-day, full sensory, logical hallucination with a timeline and consistency, you know. Um, that's not classified scientifically as a hallucination. So I don't, as I said, I don't believe I went to hell, but the experience itself, that that I could experience it was what was disturbing and it, it 
it it just it changed my my worldview um from that time on i was a lot more worried <laughs> about what was going on because before that i don't think i really cared i was like oh well if i die i die who cares but there was now this thing niggling me like whoa what does that mean and i didn't have an answer as i said until i read the bible um and i don't believe it was hell but i believe it was i believe it was some kind of a spiritual experience of the reality of the state i was in at that time and when i read the bible i understood how far I had gone and how close I was. I was at the gates of hell, so to speak, and what Jesus rescued me from when, when he opened my eyes to the truth that he is indeed the savior of the world for all who will repent and believe that he has paid the price on the cross. He has taken the punishment we deserve um, and he has completed it. He's completed everything that needs to be done. And then when he rose in the flesh, he really rose in the flesh. He broke the curse of death so that all who will repent of their rebellion against God and believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died for them and rose in the flesh and all who will declare Jesus is Lord will be saved and will have eternal life and will be reconciled with God. And through this, freed, as I have been freed from despair, depression, addiction, and the lies of the world um, and praise God because I didn't deserve it and I certainly couldn't have saved myself I there was nothing I could have done uh, God in his mercy came and got me and um, and now a lot of what happened in that darkness makes sense so I'll talk about some other stuff there's, there's another one that's connected to this um, which I'll talk about um, next. Um, but what's also super interesting is uh, the word for hell in um, when Jesus is talking about hell in these passages is Gehenna, and Gehenna is the the like the dump outside of Jerusalem, outside of the city, where they would dump all the corpses and they would dump all the like all the the trash. And only the the poorest of the poor, the, like the the lepers and the outcasts, who were losing parts of their body, right, um, would have to live there. Can you imagine? And I, I was amazed when I when I heard Gehenna is kind of like a place for decomposing corpses and where they burn bodies and body parts and dead things and lepers are there and and that was not dissimilar to what I saw. In, in this vision, let's call it a vision. So yeah, there was a lot when I was reading and learning, uh, studying, and still am studying, that explained the spiritual meaning, I believe, of the vision that I had. And um, praise God for, for his grace and his mercy. And it's available to anyone. So seek the truth. The truth exists and his name is Jesus.